Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Savior's, please visit our website at oslchurch.com. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, good morning. And the Lord be with you. Welcome, one and all, to worship on this fourth Sunday of Advent, but especially to our guests and visitors and those who join us on our television broadcast. The Holy Spirit has brought us together for this very moment that we may hear the Word of God anew and that we may glorify God's holy name. We are grateful to Angelic for returning to, le to lead our worship this morning and for the children who have been working hard to prepare for their Christmas program today. If your child is a part of that program and they're still in this room, you can take this opportunity to take them downstairs to the labyrinth room to prepare for that program. We are grateful for their uh, work to get ready for this day. And also, thank you to all of those who are participating with our uh, ugly Christmas sweater day. I feel a need to explain my appearance in case anyone is wondering, why does she look weird? <laughs> Our worship continues with our lighting of the Advent candle. Please stand as you are able. On Jordan's bank the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake my heart, and for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. Oh, the light shines in the darkness, and the light will not be overcome. In this world broken and scattered, the light will not be overcome. this Advent time of waiting and watching, the words of the angel Gabriel break into our world. Greetings, the Lord is with you. Do not fear, for nothing will be impossible with God. We respond with Mary to the angel's message. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. We join with Elizabeth to greet the mother of our Lord. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. We echo Mary's song of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. In this Advent time of waiting and watching, we pray. Gracious God, you come to us in new and surprising ways. You make the impossible possible. Help us, like Mary, to answer your call that the light of Christ may spread to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then cleansed be every light from sin, make straight the way for God within, and let us all our hearts prepare for Christ to come and enter there. Oh, the light shines in the darkness, and the light will not be overcome. In this world broken and scattered, 
the light will not be overcome. Yeah. Then let's pray. God of light and love, your promise shines forth in the light of this Advent season. Teach us to remember the stories of faith and the amazing way in which your love comes unexpectedly into the midst of our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We hear God's voice in the Bible, in preaching, in music, and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Psalms. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I shall have an answer for those who taunt me, for, for I trust in your word. Do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your ordinances. I will keep your law continually forever and ever. I shall walk at liberty, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your decrees before kings and shall not be put to shame. I find my delight in your commandments because I love them. I revere your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate upon your statutes. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is found in the Gospel of Luke. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor upon the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the, way, sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Word of God, word of life. me in a word of prayer. God of hope and promise, we give you thanks for the joy of knowing that into our world the light of your Son has come to us, just as you said he would. As Mary proclaims her love for you through the words of her song, may we too sing our songs of praises to you. Amen. Well, four candles have been lit now. The light grows brighter and brighter. The season of Advent is in full swing, and almost, almost Christmas time is here. The anticipation is in the air. You can just feel it as we begin to prepare to celebrate again that wonderful story of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we, too, today, like Mary, sing our songs of praises to God for the promise of salvation has come this Advent season. And today as we celebrate this fourth Sunday in the season of Advent, we soon come to the end of our focus on the reading that we just heard once again from Luke's Gospel, Mary's song, the Magnificat. It's been fun to spend a few weeks talking about this specific section of Scripture, this, this wonderful story, this proclamation by Mary, the joy in her heart that she is to be the mother of God's Son. And so as we come to the end of our Advent season and to the end of our thoughts on this section of Scripture, we pause one last time today to think, what is one more morsel of good news that we can learn from this wonderful gift of Mary's song? Well, think about it this way. Today I want you to keep in your minds one word, promise. Remember that word, promise, as we think again about Mary's song. A promise, a promise that God has made to all people of every time and place. A promise that we are reminded of again today. In the last two verses, it says, 
He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. It all goes back to that story from Genesis, that story, that wonderful story that that is a part of one of the readings for today. We didn't hear it just yet, but I'm going to share it with you again in just a moment. And, and I want you to think about the story, the birth of a son. God's promise that through Abraham, God would make a great nation. And from this nation, a Savior would come, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. It's fun to preach on these lessons today, and I was glad that I had the opportunity to do so this morning because they're so full of excitement and anticipation. They're, they're full of good news this morning, of impossible births, of promises fulfilled, and of hope. Hope that God will make all things new. And so if you would mind, let me pause for a moment and take us back to that story from Genesis. The Lord has come to visit Abraham and Sarah. Remember, God has made a promise to make of them a great nation, but time has passed, long past, and they have both grown very old. Did God break their promise to them? Seems like it. And one day, once, one day, unexpectedly, unexpectedly, the Lord shows up at their tent, and Abraham and Sarah prepare a wonderful, great meal in honor of their guest. And as they eat, the Lord asks Abraham, where's your wife Sarah? And Abraham says, well, she's, she's in the tent. And then unexpectedly, the Lord says to Abraham, I will surely return to you in the spring, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Remember, those years are long since passed for Abraham and Sarah. And now here's the part of the story that I just love. When Sarah hears what the Lord says, she breaks out in laughter. Yeah, right, Lord, sure, sure. After Abraham and I have grown old, then, then now we are going to be parents. And Sarah laughs. And the Lord hears her laughter. And he says to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Is anything impossible for the Lord? Sarah will have a son. And Sarah says to the Lord, No, no, I, I wasn't laughing. And, and I just love that part of the story. It's almost like a comical exchange. I wasn't laughing. Yes, you were. I wasn't laughing. Yes, you were. No, no, no. Yes, you were. You know, back and forth they go. And finally, finally, Sarah accepts the news. And the crazy way, in which God was about to fulfill a promise to them. And soon a child was born, and a nation began. Is anything impossible for the Lord? Elizabeth said to Mary, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the babe in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, Henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise, the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Sarah and Mary, two different women, two amazing, inconceivable births, the fulfillment of God's promise of salvation. Is anything impossible for the Lord? Within the beautiful words of Mary's song, we've heard 
And we remember, once again, the promise of God's gift of a son. And during this season of Advent and soon Christmas, we are drawn into a season unlike any other, a season of anticipation, of awe and wonder. It's a season in which little girls and boys dress as shepherds and angels, in which candles are lit and stories are told, and God's presence is felt in the midst of our world, in the midst of all of our life, no matter where we might find ourselves today. For even those who find themselves in darkness know that there is something different about this time of year. And to the midst of sadness and fear and joy and expectancy, there's something, there's something going on. Mary felt it. Felt it within the words of her song. We hear the feelings that she shares, the feelings that will unfold within her life and within the life of her son, God's son. Oh, it's a wonderful time of year, yes. It can be difficult. It can be joyous. No matter what it is for you, there's something going on here. Laughter and tears, joy and sorrow were felt by all of God's people throughout the centuries, by Abraham and Sarah, by Mary and Joseph, by you and by me. And even though we don't always know what God is up to, we know that God has come to us to walk with us, to be the light that shines in the midst of the darkness, to be the fulfillment of the promise given to us, Emmanuel, God with us, God with the young unwed Mary who sings her song of praise. God with the old woman Sarah as she laughs at the amazing news that the Lord has given to her. God with the old woman Elizabeth and the child within her who leaped for joy at the presence of Jesus in Mary. Emmanuel, God with us during this season of Advent and Christmas. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. God with us, always. God with you. That's the promise. This is the message of hope that we remember again this morning. And the song that we sing as God's people. Magnify the Lord, all ye people. And with all that is within you, praise God's holy name. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, Pastor Tim was two minutes early. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's continue our worship with something, huh? Let's do some prayers. Please stand as you're able. Guided by the light of Christ, let us pray for the coming dawn of joy, for healing and for comfort for all of God's people. Faithful God, true to your promises of old, 
Your eternal reign has come into the world. Give us ears to hear your call, to serve you by serving others, and give us faith to go where you send us. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, you created the mystery and beauty of the earth. Teach us how to care for this precious gift that all may know the abundance of life that you want for us and grant relief and healing to those places that have been scorched by fires. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, you bring down the powerful and you raise up the lowly. Where war rages, shatter hatred with forgiveness and healing. Where fear rules, make your all-powerful and eternal presence known. Lord, in your mercy. You remember us with mercy, Lord, as you have done for all generations. Fill us, comfort us, strengthen us, and enlighten us. Make your will known to all in need. Today we pray for healing for Ed Sessler, Paul Wong, Artis Logie, Willis Hanna, and John Thompson. And we pray for comfort and hope for the families of Joan Hilmo, Bernice Nelson, Sig Ellie. And with thankful hearts, we give you praise for the birth of a baby boy born to Ryan and Aaron Sepu, and for the gift of new life given to Ava Marie today through baptism. Lord, in your mercy. You called Mary to bear your son. We pray for pregnant women, for mothers and fathers of infants and small children, and especially for couples who bear the pain of infertility, miscarriage, or stillbirth. In the midst of their suffering, comfort them with your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all faithfulness, you continue to provide for our every need, and you lead us ever forward. Bless the ministry of this congregation and all who join in OSL's mission. Be with Pastor Justin Kosick and family as they prepare to move to Sioux Falls to partner with us in connecting faith with everyday life. Lord, in your mercy. We raise our prayers to you, O God, both spoken and silent, in the name of the one who is, who was, and who is to come, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it looks like they're ready. You can start with that intro music again, and you may be seated. Mr. Nesdal. Yes, Alex. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Really, Alex? Are you just trying to scare us? Now you know how the shepherds felt. Really? Shepherds? What shepherds? I thought you said it was a baby. Hold tight, Claire. We'll get to the part about the shepherds. Really? And Mary and Joseph's amazing journey? And what about the wise men? I mean, really, you can't tell a story without talking about the wise men. Well, of course the wise men, Ryan. But most importantly, we're here to tell the really good news of... Candy canes! Uh. Really, Jack? I think someone's had a few too many candy canes already. I'm just getting ready for the really, really, really good news. Okay, everyone, let's get started. <clears throat> it's Christmas. Trim the tree and light the lights. It's Christmas. Celebrate the season right. We won't forget the reason why Jesus Christ was born this night. The good news, the King is on His way. 
The good news will be with us today. The good news he's going to save. That is really good news. It's Christmas. Trim the tree and light the lights. It's Christmas. Celebrate the season right. We won't forget the reason why Jesus Christ was born this night. The good news, the King is on his way. The good news will be with us today. The good news he's going to say that. Actually, Alec, Alex, Mr. Nest, I was talking about the Christmas story. You mean the one with the baby, the wise men, and the candy canes? Yes, minus the candy canes, of course. Before baby Jesus was born, and even before Mary and Joseph took their journey to Bethlehem, God had the story planned out from the very beginning of time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
the spirit. Mr. Nestall. Mr. Nestall. Daddy! Yes, Hannah. I know. You love me, and I really love you. Yeah, but you really gotta go potty. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, is there someone that can take Hannah to the restroom? Sure, Mr. Nestall. Follow me, Hannah. Oh, and Mr. Nestall? Yes, Hannah. I really love you. Back, they had backpacks with French fr burgers, French French fries, burgers, and juice, and got on their camels. You know, Nina and then Santa Maria to follow a really big star. Yeah, but you know, Joey. Yeah, but Joey. They really love me. But on. And you were thinking of Christmas Columbus. Six dollar energy drinks. Everyone knows that. Not exactly. The wise men followed a big star in the sky that led them to baby Jesus. Now, Alex, remind me to talk to your older brother. <coughs> Yeah. 
His only son for me. He really did, not only for you, but for all who believe in him. Really, even Ryan. <laughs> really, Jack, you're so funny. Yes, Jesus came for everyone. And now that you know the true story of Christmas, we can go out and spread the good news to everybody. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Madstall. I can hear you. Yes! to our children, to Jean and Melissa, and to all of the parents for helping their kids practice and bringing them to rehearsals and to Sunday school as well. Thank you. Our worship continues with the giving of our offering. Thank you. 
you are able. We continue our worship by asking God for the forgiveness of our sins. We prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and our neighbor. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. We ignore our neighbors in need. We fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom and welcome your light. Help us to seek things that matter most until our Lord comes again in glory. Amen. Fear not, people of God. For the God of our ancestors remembers God's promise. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. The lowly are lifted up, and the hungry are filled with good things. We magnify our Lord, and we rejoice in God our Savior. And we remember that in the night in which his betrayed our Lord, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the table. All is now ready. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.